Sharonda Williams pair weights. Hi, how are both of you doing today? Hello, Hi, Sharonda. Sharonda. Okay, you're giving me color, the hair. Look at y'all. Y'all so cute. You okay. know, we got to mix it up. We got to like, She's you know, gorgeous. we have to celebrate Inventing Anna and this um, event television, Shonda Rhimes' first show that she's written for Netflix. We have to bring the heat. Y'all did that. <laughs> but one of the first questions that I wanted to ask the both of you is, you know, watching this series, it really reminded me on how important it is to bet on yourself, to believe in yourself so much that other people mm. have to believe in you. Ooh. And so my question for the both of you is, what was that moment where you, tr when you truly learn, like, this is the moment that made me want to bet on myself? Oh, that's, a, that's a deep question. That's Woo! a deep question. Look, y'all go deep with me, okay? Uh, you know, I, there's been a, many moments. And you, I think that's something you have to reaffirm. I don't think that's a one and Yeah, done I agree with there's that. there's been many moments when I've made choices. The, I remember one of the first, one of the first ones was me transitioning, you know, in 1998 and going to Dr. Rich's office and starting my medical transition and accepting that I was trans. But another one was when Candace Kane was on Dirty Sexy Money in 2007. And I was, and I saw mm. the first openly transgender Actors mm. have a recurring role in a primetime television show. And I said, it's possible. This is possible. Mm. And I can mm. do this. And I made 500 postcards that said, Laverne Cox is the answer to all your transgender acting needs. Sent into K agents, 500 agents and casting directors. Got four meetings. And my manager to this day, Paul Halepo, happened because of that meeting. And that was, wow, me betting, that was me betting on myself, but it was also me finally claiming my transness in a way mm. and that changed my life. Mm. I love mm. Okay. Mm. Katie, tell me about you. Oh my goodness. I mean, there's so, I like Laverne so eloquently said, I think a lot of times betting on yourself comes in waves and can waver. And it is about reconfirming it in yourself. I, I also think you change and you shift, you know, um, a lot in the choices that you make in your life. Um, gosh, you know, Shonda Rhimes has helped me so many times just reconfirm my talent and my deservingness to be here. Um, I can remember... Um, you know, having not never booking a job ever, ever, ever waitressing, babysitting Laverne and I connect a lot on this. I was a cocktail waitress at Maritime Hotel for a million years in the 2000s. Like, and, you know, I remember first seeing the Grey's Anatomy and seeing um, that that Shonda Rhimes was casting all different types of women um, because I had been told, you know, I had been, I couldn't get an agent. They said I was too fat for TV and I would never work. I mean, horrible, horrible things. But I remember just seeing a Shonda Rhimes show the great. And, and I remember thinking she likes people. It seems like she likes people. And I like to play people. You know, like I'm, I'm, I might not be a model. I might not be this, that, or the other thing, but, but I think she likes people. And I remember the first time I got an audition being like, I think I'm supposed to be here. <laughs> and I'm like affirmed my talent and my, um, you know, really coming to terms with who I am and what I bring to the table, um, and why it's important for me to be here. And sometimes what I'm hearing in Katie's story is sometimes it helps for us to see someone else believe in us to oh. inspire us to bet on ourselves, to like to, this, to someone else to create a space. Sometimes the space has to be created so that you can actually begin to see yourself. Candace Kane created that space for me. Shonda Rhimes created that mm -hmm. space for you to mm -hmm. be able to bet on yourself. So like, like there has to be a framework sometimes, you know, and then sometimes we have to create the framework. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes we have to create mm -hmm. the table, if, as we as we often say. Well, look, you both have given me a word today, so thank you, thank you for sharing your stories because it inspired me and it will inspire so many others. So I am just sitting in love and light your way. I really appreciate you speaking with me, and I hope you have the most amazing rest of your day. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, thank, thank you. you, you too, Sharonda. The nails Sharonda. are giving. The nails are giving. 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 Gorgeous. <laughs> 
Yes. Bye. And throw the thing away, honey. Give it to us. Give Thank it to you. us. Thank you. Ladies, hi. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? I'm doing good. I like this whole color combo that you have going with the paint. It's, it's, it's so accidental, too, because this is a hotel. And of course, we chose, you know, I chose to wear this, like not knowing what the hotel would look like. So, right. yes, it's just, it's, we're, we're calling. We're, we're a vision and sherbert today. I'm like, no one's going to believe you because of how spot on this is, but I'm going to believe you, okay? But please believe me. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the first questions that I wanted to ask you is, you know, one of the things that really stood out to me while watching the series was about how important it is to bet on yourself <gasps> and how, you know, with this woman, she believed in herself so much that she was able to convince all of these other people to believe in her. Yeah, and so yeah, yeah. I wanted to ask you, what was that moment in your life, you know, where you realized like, I have to bet on myself. Like this was the moment that made me know that I have to bet on myself. Uh, becoming an actor again. Yeah, as a grown up, I was in publishing. I was an editorial assistant for a science fiction fantasy imprint, which is a really fun nine to five job. But I was, you know, if uh, if if choosing you know art and books about mages and wizards isn't making you happy, then you have to figure out why. <laughs> and because um, it's a pretty happy making experience. And uh, and that's when I yeah I had to admit that I. I needed to try being an actor, um, but as a grown up uh, of my own volition, of my own choice and agency. And, uh, and um, yeah, I quit the nine to five and kind of committed to, to living on some savings for a while. So yeah, that was a bet. That was a bet on myself. And it turned out I'm here. <laughs> it paid off. <laughs> yeah, uh, it did. I, I can't explain it. One of the things that the characters learn in this series is really when to place boundaries, right? Um, how to place healthy boundaries around people who can be draining. And I wanted to know for you, like what advice would you have for that? Because I think we all deal with it. I am just, I am this, you know, this is such a, uh, um, a you know, a, a topic of the time right now, right? Like anywhere you go, we will, you know, we're all helping each other figure out like, oh no, healthy boundaries, healthy about, you know, like boundaries. Yes. What are those? And, you know, and yes, definitely, you know, the way that I was raised boundaries were not a thing. And, um, and I think that's the case for, for plenty for different reasons. And we're all learning now. And, um, and I think that it's, it's, it's sort of a lovely thing to be, you know, rooting for each other in, understanding this and uh, and developing a new language around it um you know uh, yeah every time Casey talks about those things and you know sometimes um it can it can feel you know a little tongue-in-cheek but honestly everything she says is is spot on true you know you got to take that advice because she got out of there <laughs> you know? I'm gonna protect my peace I'm not doing this with y'all right that's I'm, not, I'm not gonna make it through the series because I'm, I'm Take me yeah, first. That's right. That's right. But, but look, I want to thank you so much for talking to me today. I also want to thank you for choosing acting again as well oh, for the you. opportunity to happen. But I'm just sending so much love and light your way. And I really hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. Oh, thank I you. receive it. And I send it too. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Wait. Hi, how are both of you doing today? Well, look at that background. Good. I, I love to keep a thing going okay I have to yes. help it going thank you, thank you. <laughs> well look I got my entire life watching the series and you know there's so many different things that you can take away from it but I think for me one of the biggest things was how Anna's character always bet on herself to the point where it was almost inspiring like how much she believed in her dreams yes and I want to know for the both of you, like, what was that moment when you truly learned, like, how to bet on yourself? Like, mm. what was that moment for you? I actually think the, the start of that journey that I am very much still on, um, I have to give to the show and, and to Shonda specifically. I remember at the table read, um, I was shaking in my boots a little bit and she might have felt it. Um, but she called me over and we had a little bit of a moment and she said, um, you know, I've had three moments of sort of gut feelings about actresses making making a splash. And the first was Katie Lowe's. The second mm. was Sandra Oh. And you are the third. And it really 
like changed the way I felt I was able to show up for this work, but, but also for myself. And I, and I haven't really looked back since she, she really implanted something in me that I'll, I'll take with me for the rest of my journey. Hello. That's so amazing. I'm so proud of you. Come on. Thank you, baby. Thank you. you. Okay. Um, I had the unbelievable privilege, Sharonda, to be on Broadway um, when I was 30 years old. I'm an Iranian immigrant. I had two kids living on unemployment, and I was on starring on a Broadway show opposite Robin Williams. And um, Robin basically, you know, was my mentor. I mean, he really, not about acting, more about like human being and how to like treat other people and really how that's going to be more important. And he said to me once, in backstage uh, near our dressing rooms or next to each other. He said to me, he goes, the difference between an A plus actor and a B plus actor is not talent. It's how you treat people. And I kind of latch on to that. Iranians have a good sense of trying to be community members and trying to help one another when we can. And so I feel the more I bet on that and, 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 and that, the more I bet on myself because it gives me the confidence to kind of move forward. Okay, y'all better give me some words of wisdom. Got me <laughs> up. Come on now. We're just <laughs> trying to keep up. We're trying to keep up for you with how amazing you look right now. Oh my goodness. Some facts. You got me in my feelings now. Okay. Me too. All right. <laughs> I'm control of this interview. My oh. goodness. Hey, I'm going to lose an eyelash. Oh, so, come on. I'm serious. I mean, but one of the things that I find very fascinating about both of your characters in this series is it almost seems as though your characters both cling to Anna in an effort for you to escape the real problems within your lives. And I wanna know like, if you can shed some like backlight on your characters, why do you think that they're choosing to ignore their own issues or letting themselves get in the way of fixing their problems while still trying to cling to Anna as a scapegoat almost? I think um, for Neff, she, identifies and is an artist um, in the same way that Anna is. She's a celebrator of the art and Neff is actually trying to make a film throughout the, the process of her knowing Anna. And I think she's running up against the most difficult roadblock there is when it comes to making art, which is yourself. It's, it's feeling like you are an imposter. It's feeling like you're not good enough. You don't have enough. And the lack of resources is also a very real thing, but I think mm -hmm. a lot of it um, does come from a, a, a sense of, of self-doubt that we all have. And there's something electric about Anna's sort of inability to even access doubt. It is not in her orbit at all. And that is a foreign and desirable land that Neff wants to live in. And so I think being able to throw herself into being Anna's number one, number two, because um, Anna is Anna's number one, <laughs> uh, is, <laughs> is, is a way that she can almost study Anna, soak up the energy and, and feel a part of the magic that hopefully will give her, you know, a, a blueprint for building her own wings to fly her own dream. I think it's because, you know, one of the things that Shonda is really kind of going after on this show is, how far are you going to go for success? And there's something about how she is so unabashedly confident that you even said it's sometimes inspiring. And as someone, for Todd at least, that's trying to climb the ladder and be kind of like known and or thought of as like serious and not the person that, you know, uh, gets Alec Baldwin's stalker, like, I think there's something really energetic and exciting about what Anna has that I think he just gravitates towards. And to be honest, it seems like everyone that we talk to that actually met the actual Anna says the same thing. Like, there's something about her that's so intoxicating. We were told while we were all shooting and she was in prison the first time um, that she was, um, that the security guards were uh, wrapped around her finger. They were like, they basically gave her a full carte blanche. They loved her. That's why she got off a little bit early because of good behavior. Um, so I don't know. She's got something going on. 
Well, look, I just want to thank the both of you for such a fantastic conversation. I really enjoy speaking with the both of you. I'm sending nothing but love and light your way. And I just hope that you have the most amazing part of your day. And yes to the Blazer Gangs. Yes, Blazers. I'm here for it. Yes. (laughs) Come on, y'all. Yes. Let's do it. Thank you so much. And I gotta say, you asked some of the best questions so far today. And I think Alexis is going to be telling you the truth. Yeah. Thank you so Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Much love. Bye.